I am continuing my video series on terrestrial paradise. This is part 2 of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video, the link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. In the previous episode, we explored the strange and beautiful world of ancient maps, focusing on a map made by Giovanni Lirdo in 1442. Before the 1500s, maps oriented east as north and west as south, hinting at a different understanding of the world. We uncovered fascinating details. Noah's Ark on Mount Ararat, Christian symbols in Jerusalem even though history says Muslims controlled it in 1442, and Babylon marked in Egypt, not Iraq. These maps raise questions about a possible connection between Christianity and Islam at that time, and whether our understanding of places like Babylon and the terrestrial paradise has been lost to history. Another old maps like Evesham and Ebsturf world map also depict a terrestrial paradise. In today's episode, we'll continue to unravel these mysteries, exploring how these ancient perspectives could reshape our understanding of history. Without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This beauty is a world map by Andreas Walsperger from 1448. It's currently tucked away in Vatican City. Obviously, there was no standard of which viewpoint to see Earth from. It'll look more familiar to you if I flip it upside down. The Red Sea seems to have been important to our ancestors. They made sure to mark it bright red on all maps. It also appears much bigger than our Red Sea. I have a hunch there is more to the story, I just don't know it yet. Again, we see the disproportionately large terrestrial paradise on the far side of the map. We also see that the whole world was kingdoms and castles, not just Europe as they taught us in school castles were in Africa and Asia. That's why we find star forts across the world. That's why we find remains and ruins of similar structures on every continent. That's why religious scriptures describe countries in terms of kingdoms. I believe the world was ruled under monarchies which in turn, were ruled from the terrestrial paradise. This aligns with Taoist doctrine, according to which no earthly ruler was allowed to reign without the approval of heaven. This map makes me think that my eastern coast of China theory for paradise in the previous episode is probably wrong. We see the same geography here as on other maps. Africa, India and the Antarctic are one continent. Then there is Upper India on which we find the terrestrial paradise, surrounded by mountains. Again, noting the distance from the Red Sea, it would place it in today's Tibet. The world center of Buddhism was once the terrestrial paradise of the Abrahamic religions. What a mind trip. This is a close-up of paradise. It's here shown atop mountains, having three arched entrances, four massive towers on the side, and three at the center. For the record, this is a 1418 map by the Chinese Admiral Zheng. It shows America 70 years before Columbus discovered it. It aligns with other older maps in that India is not yet as big as it would later be, and California is a separate island. Unfortunately, I found no translation of it, so I could not make out whether our terrestrial paradise is shown on it. Also for the record, this is a map by Sebastian Monster, 1554. It reveals so much about our hidden history, and confirms many things in this and previous videos. Die no Welt is ancient German for the New World. We see that Cathay, China or Tartaria as it was called back then, is also called India Superior we see California split off. We see South America once again labeled as a place of giants and cannibals. We see a known Antarctic continent. We even see New Zealand which wasn't supposed to be known yet at the time, here called Kalenswin. What did scholars do with that? They called Kalenswin a mythical place. But it wasn't mythical, it was simply New Zealand. This is claimed to be the oldest known Chinese map, said to be 3000 years old. It is from the mythological book Classics of Mountains and Seas, or Shanghai Jing, a book that also contains headless people, giants, dragons and the usual. Again, easier to understand if I turn it for you. It's immensely interesting, it explains so much. It aligns with what we've learned so far. The pre-flood world had a ring of land around it. After the disaster, this ring split into the Americas, bottom of this map, Antarctica and Australia, right side of the map, and China became bigger, right side of this map. This is why I at first thought that terrestrial paradise is on the east coast of China. 
Now I can see that the East Coast used to be where Tibet is today. We see Europe and a much narrower Mediterranean. Below it, Africa and Arabia. Russia, India and Asia are not yet split apart. There are circled islands south, east and west, but none in the north. Unfortunately I found no high resolution of this map and no translation. This map is from 1040. It's called the Cotton World Map. It has several red streams of water, not just one red sea. It's a simpler rendering of the pre-cataclysmic world. Bottom left is Hibernia, which is the old name of Ireland, so beside that must be Britain and then Europe. Fortunately, for once, I found a readable version of the map. Here, we find Babylonia and a place beside Mesopotamia, which would in fact be modern-day Iraq. Babylon was a large kingdom, it could have easily spanned both Iraq and Egypt. If the map is accurate, the world looked much different in 1040. At the top where I went looking for paradise, we again find India, and above it the Golden Mountain. I remember that Mount Kailash, in Tibet, has been called the Golden Mountain. This is 1436 Bianco's world map. And tilted. I can clearly discern Spain, Italy, Britain, North Africa and Russia on this map. The rest looks different. If someone wanted to make the case that the terrestrial paradise is in Yemen or Oman, Gulf of Aden, they could use this map for it. Consider the location of the Red Sea and the Four Rivers Paradise beside it. But I don't believe it's in Yemen, because the distances are too far. My best guess is still Tibet, based on distance and mythology. This is a close-up of the terrestrial paradise region. We see lands of kings and queens. There are four rivers flowing out of the Garden of Eden, just like the religious scriptures say. Across from paradise is the land of Gog and Magog, again a reference to cannibalism. Notice also the land of headless people. All very strange and interesting. The land of Gog and Magog, by the way, is said by some to be ancient Mongolia. This map moves Babylonia back to Egypt, south of Cairo, or east of Chiro on this map. Here is Mapa de Borgia, date unknown, said to be from the late 1400s. The map is upside down compared to ours. If I flip it around, you'll see. A close-up of paradise in the Far East. Isn't it great to have maps that tell you where to go to reach paradise? This map also speaks of paradise being near India. A closer examination reveals that a much larger region was called India in those days. For example, Kathai, Mongolia and northern China is here called Lower India. The city of Kathai, it is said, is the seat of the Tartars. It's very near paradise. This image is titled Sacred Earthly Realms and Paradises. It was painted in the 1600s of Tibet and currently resides in the Rubin Museum of Art. The description says that within Tibet, there is a concealed terrestrial paradise, and above it, a heavenly paradise. This video hasn't pinpointed the terrestrial paradise just yet. But it's opened many doors to strange and beautiful places. If you feel inspired to do your own research, go for it. Knowledge dissemination relies on you. Share this video far and wide.